afternoon. Um, as Tom uh, introduced, my name is Adam Hennon. I'm the board chair of the 2019 year um, and I'm a principal with Wilson Field. So um, thank you for choosing to spend your lunch hour with us. There's a lot of different ways you can spend it. I know what you're thinking is an hour with Tom Snell is a lot to ask, but uh, <laughs> we're glad you decided to, to enjoy it anyway. <laughs> we're going to get started right away, so please do continue to eat while um, we speak. Uh, we have a lot of program to fit in, and, and we're going to try and fit it into a very small amount of time. So um, while you eat, we'll just continue to talk. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the Business and Achievement Awards Committee, Randy Fulton, Scott Brummelkamp, Tiffany Schmidt, Barb Sheldon, and Rita Peckman. And Maureen, I, I remember being at these meetings too, but I don't see my name. So not to sound self-serving, but Adam Hennon is on there as well. <laughs> sure um, no, for real, they, uh, they put a lot of hard work into this and, and pulling this event together. Uh, we received dozens of nominations and awards uh, that the committee had their work cut out for them and, and sorting it out. And, and the quality of the nominations are always top notch. There's a lot of deserving people up there. I also want to give a huge thanks. Making sure we're still back on. Can you hear me? There we go. I uh, give a huge thanks to Nick Anderson. Nick is the videographer who put the upcoming videos that we're going to watch here together for us. So thank you, Nick. And with that, I think we'll start off with the first video. My name is Jenny Moore. I am the White Bear Lake Career Pathways Navigator, and I work with White Bear Lake Area Schools. The Career Pathways program is for high school students who are interested in receiving help to make informed decisions about their career choice, and then we help them appropriately match their post-secondary plans based on said career choice. We have five specific pathways. Um, manufacturing engineering was our original pathway. We have information technology, healthcare, construction skilled trades, and brand new this year is automotive. As of today, with the brand new school year, we're looking about 1,200 students across the whole board of just signing up on their own or taking these pathway classes. And it's really exciting how many students are really interested. We love the Certified Nursing Assistant Program. And for those who don't know, it's the, one of the first industry recognized credentials that you can get as a 16 year old in healthcare. So as a result, we were fortunate enough to receive the first round of a youth skills training grant through the Minnesota Department of Labor and Industry for $95,000 and we were able to create a sustainable lab within our South Campus. The main message is that the entire Wiper Lake community as a whole is an example of how we really can work together to shape the future um, and that it's, that it's a complete team effort and that we really can be a part of the solution by addressing these workforce shortage issues that really ha we haven't seen anything like this in, in our history. Support that the Business Education Network has provided for White Bear Lake Career Pathways is, is unbelievable. Uh, the teacher externship opportunities really is an example of how um, we can focus on all people in the, in the problems and solutions in the program itself. It's not just about the students. All the industry partners and all the employers and post-secondary institutions and teachers and faculty and staff and White Bear District, everyone. Um, parents too, who are starting to really support their students and help and, and being curious about what are the other options for them. So basically thank you everyone for just working with us and being willing to, to support us. So as the video indicated, the first award goes to Jenny Moore, the Career Pathways Navigator for the White Bear Lake Schools. <laughs> Jenny started the Gen Z program, expanded the Career Pathways program, and has doubled the number of businesses within the Chambers Bend, which stands for Business Education Network Program, within one year. She has volunteered at numerous Chamber events and co-chaired, yeah, this is my better side, yeah. Should, yeah. Uh, has volunteered at numerous Chamber events and has co-chaired the Career Exploration uh, since before its inception. In talking to numerous schools, school districts across the state, all of them want what White Bear Lake has in a Career Pathways program. They also want Jenny. She works year-round to find opportunities for every one of her students and takes pride in her work. Her success leads to successful students. What Jenny has done and is doing for the students in White Bear Lake is exactly what they and our business members need. She's creating a strong future workforce and bridging the workforce skills gap. Thank you, Jenny. 
for all that you do. Skylar Laminin and I'm a co-owner of Bear Nutrition. It's a healthy alternative for food. There was no nutrition for the sports teams or just anyone around in White Bear and they were about they were only like 20 minutes away because we worked at one like half an hour away so we decided that we'd open one here. We have about 15 coaches here. I like helping people so it's exciting to see all the new people that come in. In the future, my mom will probably go open a new one, and then I will take this one. Yep, I always like it. That's why I come back over and over again. Support goes to Skylar Laminin, a young entrepreneur and White Bear Lake student who had the vision and spirit to launch her very first business at the age of 17. With the support of her parents, Bear Nutrition is sure to be a stepping stone to a bright and successful future. Congratulations, Skylar. <laughs> Tom lied. He said that she wanted to say a few words, but that's all right. Thanks, guys. I am Blaine Stevens. My business is Schooley Mitchell. We are cost reduction consultants. We help businesses save money on expense areas where they're wasting 28% or more. Uh, here we take care of each other and we actually care about how each other are doing as business people, but also as, as uh, you know, individuals. We've gotten signed up for a few nonprofit boards. So Children's Performing Arts here in White Bear, I'm very active as a board member there. I have joined Northeast Residents in White Bear. Uh, I'm the treasurer of the board there, and then I'm on the board for the White Bear Area Chamber. I love to see that result where people uh, thought no savings was possible and were able to do that. In my personal life, of course, I'm proud of my family. My wife is 26 years, my kids 25 and uh, 24 and 21. Uh, and to see them as uh, grown-ups now, uh, when uh, as kids you would have wondered if they'd ever make it there, uh, it's, it's very gratifying to see their, their uh, development and their success. It takes a village to support someone like me, so uh, that's where the chamber and other networking groups that I belong to, they're, they're the key to my success. And if you didn't have those people who were willing to have coffee with you, and maybe exchange some ideas or tell you what worked in their business, it's like you're you're out there kind of floundering on your own. So that support community is great. The chamber itself has been great. What you, Tom, and, and Sherry do to support all of us is just really inspiring. And uh, I don't think our chamber would be nearly as strong as it is without your support. So the Chamber Volunteer of the Year Award, um, as the video indicates, is awarded to Blaine Stevens. Um, as you can see in the video, Blaine's a great guy, uh, has served uh, as a chamber board director and is currently co-chair of the chamber ambassadors group. Um, and this group of people, besides showing up for the ribbon cuttings, um, is really a great group of people and a warm welcome to the new chamber members and the businesses of our community. And so the work that they do to make businesses feel welcome in part of the community is really outstanding. Uh, with close to 60 ribbon cuttings and grand openings during the year, Blaine shows up to nearly all of these celebrations. And I can speak to that if I ever need to find Blaine. I don't go to the board meeting, I go to the ambassadors. He is a kind, knowledgeable, and hardworking friend of the chamber and community. Thank you, Blaine, for your dedication and commitment. We are truly grateful. Orgulum with Techie Dudes. Been in IT for so long that I decided to uh, start up a uh, business that would help support residents and small businesses with IT support and services. There's just three of us right now. We each have specialties, but we overlap and really can do you know anything from networking to computers, security, cameras, phone systems, 
um, backup and security. Uh, like I said, just about anything under the sun with uh, network and computer related. Most of the businesses are, my computer, I just got to work, my computer doesn't fire up, it's completely black. Or we don't have any internet service, or we fired up our server and now everything's down, our business is at a standstill. So we don't book um, our entire day out every day so that we have room left. Um, our, our goal response time for business responses is within one hour. So uh, we try to be very reactive and responsive to our business clients. My vision would be within five years, I'd have three or four offices around the Twin Cities and then continue to see where it goes and grow from there. But my heart is really with the small business owners. I mean, they're just the real people. We don't take any clients over 100 employees um, because of that fact. I just love working with the small business owners and the genuine and honesty that they have of driving the heartbeat of America. The Chamber of Commerce has just been fantastic. Um, the relationships, and if, if you use the Chamber of Commerce as one of your resources to network and meet people, it's just been fantastic to me. The people that I've met, they're not all my clients, but they are great with advice. You know, they're, they're willing to help out whatever you need. They're just great people to work with, and I, I can't say enough about it, and I, I've really enjoyed it. It's only been a short ride for me, about a year and a half so far, but uh, it seems like just yesterday I started, and I've got all these friends already, so it's just fantastic. The Business Person of the Year Award celebrates the individual business person who shows exemplified business savvy, who directly helped in the business's growth and showed ingenuity and entrepreneurship. And from the video, wow, what an impact Jeff has had. Uh, he has provided such a great service to so many of our chamber members. Technology is not always easy for many of us. Uh, given the example with the microphone here already. This <laughs> Jeff was, I, I saw him, he was like right on the edge of his seat, ready to come up and troubleshoot this for us. Uh, but there's Jeff, um, and he's a natural and seems to get just get it, uh, making our business run smoother, limiting the amount of tr uh, frustration and downtime that is so typical with the techie stuff. Uh, we received several nominations for Jeff from all over the community for that very reason. Jeff is also a co-chair for the Chamber Ambassadors Group and has recently acquired another techie type business. It is my pleasure to give the award for Business Person of the Year to Jeff Orkel. My name is Joel Anderson. I work with uh, Ramsey, or I work for Ramsey County, and I work uh, primarily on a program called Biz Recycling. Biz Recycling is a program. It's a joint uh, program with uh, Washington County, and it's uh, designed to get businesses started in recycling programs. It's a grant program that uh, any business is eligible in Ramsey or Washington County that has four or more employees and uh, is offices uh, not in their house but it provides up to $10,000 worth of uh, grant money to uh, purchase any, any number of things. Uh, we've purchased uh, recycling containers, trash containers, um, uh, dumpster enclosures for if they're gonna add a recycling stream, we'll pay for to expand the uh, dumpster enclosure in a parking lot. Uh, if, they, if it's a restaurant, we'll pay for reusable um, serviceware a dishwasher if it's a, a small restaurant that just uses styrofoam and just throws um, those materials out. We also have an organics program. So if a restaurant decides to start doing organics recycling, we'll pay for the first few months of services for that service as well. It's all about volume. Uh, if you are a high volume uh, producer of trash and recycling, um, then, then you'll probably see uh, more cost savings. You, you'll see um, uh, there's a tax on the trash. Uh, it's with the combined state and county uh, taxes. It's a 73% tax. Uh, so everything that goes into a trash dumpster has that tax. Everything that is diverted into recycling or organics, there is no tax. There's the, the cost of the service, but there is no tax. So you'll see a savings of, of uh, possible savings of, of money. Um, and then two, on the other side of it, uh, you won't have to put out the infrastructure to start the program. That's the design of the, the program. 
will pay for all of the containers and education. I'd like to say it's been an absolute pleasure partnering with uh, the White Bear Chamber. Um, we really value that partnership and um, reaching out to your business members. Um, they can either reach out to, to you as the chamber or go to bizrecycling.com. We have a uh, email that uh, you just fill out um, that gets sent in and uh, somebody from Minnesota WasteWise will contact you usually within one day. My name is John Hain. I'm the general manager of Cummins Sales and Service on White Bear Lake and we have about 200 employees here. Our goal originally was to try and find a way to make our facility zero waste to landfill. And what we realized early on was that we were already zero waste to landfill because of Ramsey County incinerating their waste for energy recovery. So then we started looking into, you know, what else can we do to be, you know, good stewards of the environment? Um, and through the chamber, I met John Clapperich from the uh, WasteWise program. So he helped walk me through the grant process. And what we were able to do is implement an organics recycling program. So that grant allowed us to um, get compostable products for our lunchrooms, so our coffee cups, our plates, silverware, things like that are all compostable products now. We have new uh, compostable bins. We have a compostable pickup that we set up through Walters Recycling, so they come on a weekly basis and pick up all of our, 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 our organics recycling materials. Um, and then we did some uh, employee training, so stuff like that, that we were able to get everyone on board with the program. Our target goal for the program is to be able to eliminate one garbage pickup per week. So for our facility, that's going to amount to 42,000 pounds of waste a year that is no longer being uh, incinerated and instead is being uh, composted. And this gets picked up on a weekly basis by the same haulers that we use for our recycling and for our garbage. So it's very convenient. And you know, when I called our, when I called Walters, they knew exactly what I was. I said, you know, I want to talk about this recycling program, and they said, absolutely. No, here's what you need. You know, gave us all the options, and within a week we were set up. So it was very easy. I would definitely recommend that people um, participate and, and apply for that WasteWise grant. Um, it's not only you know being a, a good steward of the environment, but it also you know financially can make a lot of sense depending on your facility. It could be cost, you know, be a cost savings because of the way. Um, garbage is taxed, you may end up actually being able to save money if you switch to an organic recycling program. Good afternoon, I think at this point, yes. I'm Victoria Reinhardt, Ramsey County Commissioner, and I serve as Vice Chair of the Recycling and Energy Board. And for those of you that have known me for a while, you know that I usually say that I love garbage. Um, and it's because you can make a difference. Every single person makes a difference in what you do. And with all of the information out now about climate change and the environment and all of the things that we need to do, everything that we can do as individuals, as businesses, makes a difference. And I want to say thank you to the White Bear Chamber uh, for being such a, uh, an advocate for this program. It's individualized. If you, have, if you have two locations of one business, you get it individualized for each location if you are in Ramsey or Washington County. Um, also, I want to say give it up for Joel. Let's see, where are you at? You're back there, right? He does a fantastic job um, in, in making sure that, you, that your needs are met. So I get to present the award, the Biz Recycling Award. This award honors a business that has successfully implemented waste management programs by incorporating reduction, reuse, recycling, and buying recycled materials. Executing an integrated waste management program and ongoing employee education program for waste reduction efforts through Biz Recycling. In recognition of the great strides taken for 2019 workplace waste reduction and recycling, I present this award to Cummins Sales and Service. So the we'll, next video will feature the business of the year, which celebrates the individual business that contributed to our local economy in an outstanding manner, showing an exemplified business savvy. The winner of this award has already helped an industry show ingenuity, job creation, entrepreneurship, or excelled in sales. My name is Josh Helm. I'm the owner of J-Dog Junk Removal Twin Cities. j 
JDOG Jump Removal White Bear Lake opened in April of 2018. We were lucky to expand very quickly. And in January of 2019, we became JDOG Jump Removal and Hauling Twin Cities. I graduated from White Bear Lake in 2004 and joined the Army. I did eight years with two tours in Iraq. In 2017, I started looking for new opportunities. I contacted my partner for my first tour, who opened JDOG um, Milwaukee in 2014. He asked me if I wanted to come down and take a look, see what he had going on. Uh, I went down there, started working for him, immediately fell in love with the veteran community and atmosphere. So I came back to Minnesota and opened JDOG Wiper Lake. What's unique about JDOG is we empower veterans with employment and opportunity. We also serve the community, we donate and volunteer, and we protect the environment. What makes me most proud of JDOG is what we stand for empowering veterans, serving the community, and protecting the environment. We volunteer at local legions and VFWs. We serve burgers and have dinners on Veterans Day. We also donate to the DAV, Bridging, and other organizations around the Twin Cities. In fact, just this year, we've donated about 20 box trucks worth of items. Josh and his employees strive to serve you with respect, integrity, and trust, the same values they live by in the military. Josh is also involved with Beyond the Yellow Ribbon Network and the American Legion and Bridging. Much of what is picked up by JDOG is donated back to the community. Recently, a full living room set was put together in their warehouse and donated to a soldier's mother who was in desperate need. Josh also flew to Florida last January to participate in the lifetime show called Military Makeover with Montel. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the great honor of presenting JDOG Junk Removal and Hauling as 2019 Business of the Year. Now on to our legacy of excellence. This is an individual who has a history of demonstrating amazing commitment to our communities through serving others and giving of themselves. Contributing to community-oriented projects and, enha and enhancements with service to boards, charities, mentoring, and more. My name is Patty Hall, and I'm the founder of h 2 for Life. h 2 for Life is an educational organization that focuses on the global water crisis. We engage, educate, and inspire you to learn about the global water crisis and take action to provide water sanitation and hygiene education projects to schools around the world. We have five employees at our office, and that's grown a lot in the last couple of years, so that's great news for us. Each year, we engage between 150 and 200 U.S. schools to participate with us, and those students raise, on average, about $250,000 for water projects around the world. In the last 11 years, we're going into year 12, we've funded projects for close to 1,000 schools around the world and engaged over 800,000 U.S. youth to participate. So a school looks on our website, chooses a project somewhere in the world that they're interested in, and they set a funding goal. They then use our materials that are all online to educate kids about what is the global water crisis, why is it important for us to be involved, and it's the global call to action that isn't only including what's happening globally in a developing world country, but it's also what kids can do in their own backyards to conserve and protect water resources. The impact on kids that live in developing world countries is really profound. We have found that water changes everything. Once kids have access to water, it evens the playing field for girls who are typically the ones that are tasked to go and gather the water every day, missing hours of school. And it also provides sanitation and hand washing, which is critical to reduce illnesses and disease in those schools. Increases attendance and provides economic opportunities for each community. And what I saw happening in my classroom is kids became leaders, kids became engaged, kids became empathetic, and they really understood that they could make a difference and their difference could be made worldwide. So our hope is that they'll become global citizens who are civically engaged for the rest of their lives and know that doing good feels good. Patty Hall spent 30 years in education with a focus on special ed. 
Her background provided many important skills and curriculum, presenting for groups, connecting with teachers and teacher organizations, and essential computer skills. That paired with her passion for education led her to help create H2O for Life. In 2007, Patty received a cry for help from a small village in Kenya that was desperate to build a water project. She introduced the idea to her school to see if they could help raise funds for the project. Staff and students embraced the challenge. Students learned about the global water crisis and created action plans that ended up donating $13,000 to the village, twice the amount. <coughs> Today they have water available year-round due to the efforts of Patty and her school. Wanting to do more, Patty and a group of committed parents and teacher volunteers established H2O for Life as a nonprofit. Since 2007, nearly 1 million students from H2O for Life schools have supported water, sanitation, and hygiene education projects for partner schools in the developing world. Nearly 1,000 water, sanitation, and hy hygiene education projects have been completed and 414,000 international students now have access to water at school. Over 1,600 schools around the U.S. and Canada have participated in H2O for Life, and 723,500 students have learned about the global water crisis and taken action to fight it. As you can see, Patty Hall has created a legacy that is worldwide. I am very humbled to be able to present the Legacy of Excellence Award to Patty Hall. Thank you to all our award winners. Now I would like to introduce our featured speaker for today. Fox 9 Chief Meteorologist Ian Leonard lives his life through one simple run-on sentence. I love my life, I love my wife, I love my daughters, and I love my dog. I kind of like the cats. <laughs> you really say that? Yeah. <laughs> In the past three years, Ian survived cancer, finished the Lake Placid Ironman 140.6 miles, and learned to empty the dishwasher at home. <laughs> I, I, I'm still it's, 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 it's a work in progress. Yeah. <laughs> he works tirelessly for the 8,000 plus athletes of Special Olympics Minnesota all year long with the annual polar plunge in the winter and his Bad Pants Open Golf Tournament in the fall. Through it all, Ian has helped raise over $20 million for Special Olympics Minnesota in the past 14 years and doesn't plan to stop anytime soon. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to present Mr. Ian Lynn. Good afternoon, how are you, good? Everyone's good, we've all uh, had, our, had our fill of everything. Here's what I would tell you today, um, that in terms of business excellence in the North and Northeast Metro, this is it. Some of the awards that were given out today from, from worldwide impacts in water, from local impacts in nutrition, it's, uh, it's one of those days that we say, yeah, we're, we're doing a great job on behalf of business. But for the next, yeah, thank you very much. For the next uh, 20 minutes or so, I want you to close your books on business because I want to talk a little bit about personal life. And anybody who knows me, who watches me, um, knows that I live my life, I have a passion, I have a purpose to do things in our community. And I realize that the day I retire from television or the day I, I leave the Greater Twin Cities Metro, I know as much as I know the sun is coming up tomorrow, that there will not be a sign that says, Ian Leonard once lived here. He did some kind of cool stuff and he wore these really bizarre clothes. That's not going to happen. That sign won't be erected. But what I will do is I will know there's a legacy that's been left, not just by me, but by my family. Let me tell you a little bit about my family. We call ourselves the Helping Hand Leonards. And 99% of the time, the Helping Hand Leonards do things in the community without a television camera, without a microphone, and a lot of times without a lot of planning. The Helping Hand Leonards work to leave our legacy behind, to make our little corner of the world a little better place. The one question I want to leave you with today, and for the rest of this week, the rest of this month, the rest of this year, maybe for the rest of your lives, 
is to answer one question every single time you wake up in the morning and every single time you go to bed at night. Before you go to bed at night, I'd like you to be able to answer the question, what did I do for somebody else today? And when you wake up in the morning, I want you to ask the question, what will I do for somebody else today? And it seems, it seems like one of those questions, well, I don't know, I, I held the door open, I paid for the coffee behind me for the car, I saw a veteran somewhere and I paid for their lunch bill, which I'd invite you all to try. It's a really great feeling. But as you wake up in the morning, what will I do for somebody else today? I tell you, the only way to answer that question is to figure out what is your passion and what is your purpose in life? And I realize that's a question that kind of resounds like, oh, what came first, the chicken or the egg? I don't know, if the egg got here, it must have been brought by some crazy space flying chicken and it's some cosmic egg. How did it get here? How are we going to uh, hatch the egg if there's no chickens before the egg? Crazy stuff. And I would tell you it's crazy to ask you, what is your passion and what is your purpose in life? If you can't find your purpose, I'd invite you to find your passion because inevitably it will lead to your purpose. As you work your way through your everyday life, we are all so busy. I know it. We are all tapped in terms of financial and time resources. We don't sit around our kitchen table at home and say, my goodness, what are we going to do with all this extra time? And honey, there's a closet over there full of money. What should we do with all that extra cash we have? Those are conversations we don't have in our house. We're trying to fiscally plan for our daughters to go to college, try and figure out how to repair a garage door that magically stopped working yesterday. Those are the, the decisions that we have in our house. Trying to help my daughters with their homework, trying to figure out how the Helping Hand Leonard's will step forward today and what will we do for somebody else today and more importantly before we go to bed reflecting on the fact what did we do for someone else today I'm lucky uh, our television station is in Eden Prairie I live in Eden Prairie we paid too much for a house to live in Eden Prairie so that every day between the nightly news and 6.30 and 9 p.m. I go home and have dinner with my children and every single day I sit at a table with my kids and I say, what was the best part of your day? And the most important question I ask my children every day, what was the worst part of your day? I think reflection helps make your life better. And it's not always saying, dad, it was great. I got 20 out of 20 on my physics quiz today. That is great. But it's, well, we had a bit of a problem in the lunchroom and I got into an argument with another girl. And my job is to help them reflect on that and try and figure out how to move forward. Their purpose is to go to school. Their passion is to help in the community. Most folks know that I work tirelessly for Special Olympics Minnesota. I was really happy about two weeks ago, Minnesota Special Olympics asked me to come for lunch. And I went for lunch and they tried to pay the bill and I said, absolutely not. I raise money so you don't spend money and I paid for the bill and they said, well, that raises something really neat. We want to tell you something and we don't really know how to tell you this. But we did a study. We commissioned a study for the last two years. We wanted to see where our money comes from. Who's responsible for bringing in the money for Special Olympics Minnesota? And they said, I get choked. They said, for the last two years, we've been able to identify that your name and what you do for us has brought in $1.1 million both years for the last two years. And that, my friends, is finding your passion and your purpose. And I don't tell you that so that you go, wow, I tell you that so that you can understand where my passion and my purpose come from. I want to take you way back to when I was, uh, to when I was 11 years old. My best friend's name was Tom Pitts. And Tom's younger brother, John, was autistic. And, you know, you're 10 or 11 years old and the, his younger brother is autistic and you think, oh, well, that's, that's too bad. He's the boy who's in the basement or rides his bike up and down the street every day. But he started to get picked on and Tom got together with me and a couple of uh, other friends, Michael Reynolds and Mike Osipchuk, and we said, that's not going to happen any longer on our watch. And we made sure that didn't happen. One of us was always around. Now, fast forward, I'm part-time weekend meteorologist. This is in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, which explains a lot. I know I'm Canadian. And Tom's mother called me. She said, we've never had a fundraiser for Special Olympics. Would you host it for us? And I said, sure, it'd be my honor, Mrs. Pitts. You know, when you grow up with a family, 
and the mother and father will always so suddenly I'm 35 years old and I still call her Mrs. Pitts she said well it's Shirley and I said no it's, it's Mrs. Pitts and to this day it is still Mrs. Pitts so I went and I hosted the fundraiser and the auctioneer didn't show up he wasn't taking it very seriously it's Special Olympics it's no big deal and she said we don't have an auctioneer would you do it for us I said absolutely it'd be my pleasure I don't know what I was doing. I started talking fast and making people laugh and suddenly we raised a whole bunch of money. And Special Olympics Canada came up to me and they said, you know, you obviously have a passion here that's been around you for a long time. We've never had a spokesperson. And I said, well, that's funny. I've never been a spokesperson. And that's when it all started back in the 90s in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Ever since then, I've worked tirelessly for Special Olympics. From Edmonton, I went down to work for NBC in Iowa. You see, I married a, a marvelous woman who is uh, American. She's the best part of everything I am and everything I do. And after 9-11, she wanted to move back to the United States. So we did, I called my agent and we ended up working in Iowa. And I went to Special Olympics Iowa and I said, hey, I'm here. I, I said, hey, I'm here, I'm ready to help. I've got this letter from Special Olympics Canada. Put me to work. And they said, and we're good, we're good. Thanks, we're good. And I said, ah, this is a funny joke. I really like this. Let's sit down and iron this out. How can I help? And they said, yeah, we're good. And I went home to my wife and I said, they didn't, they didn't want our help. And she said, well, what are we going to do? We have to do something. That's what we do. We're the Helping Hand Leonards. So I went to the United Way of Iowa and I said, apparently, I've got some free time. And they said, that's great. You are now the chairman of the United Way for next year. Helping Hand Leonard's. My passion is trying to make my little corner of the world a little bit better place. I'm not sure what your passion is. You have a passion for your business. You have a purpose to feed your family, to put a roof over your head every single day. But when you're trying to find something outside of your professional life, I would ask you this, three questions, three questions. Ask yourself this tonight when you get home. Ask your wife, your husband, your children. What am I good at? Obviously, you're really good at doing what you do every single day to feed your families and make a living. That's why you're here at the Professional Excellence Awards. What am I good at? That's question one. What do I like to do? That's question two. And number three, the big one here, what does the world need? I don't need to tell H2O what the world needs. You already know and you've identified it. You've taken your passion and made it your, your, your business purpose. And that's incredible. But not everybody has that opportunity. You all have jobs. You all have uh, businesses. You all have careers. What am I good at? What do I like? And what does the world need? Let me take you back to when I was just starting in television. And our company believed really in giving back. They gave us a week off every year to go and build homes with Habitat for Humanity. A week off, paid, to go and build homes with Habitat for Humanity. What an incredible gesture on behalf of a corporation. But you get there and you start building things, and I'm going to tell you, we were putting together kitchen cabinets, and I am the world's crappiest kitchen cabinet maker. And I am confident that the world does not need me to put together kitchen cabinets. I identified the world needs something like that. The house has to be built. But I'm not very good at it. I don't really like doing it. So I started thinking, what's something that I can do? I could definitely go outside and shovel a bunch of dirt into a wheelbarrow and mix cement and concrete and build fences. I can do that all day. Kitchen cabinets, not so much. Finished cabinetry and, and carpentry, I can't do. But I do know that when I put one of these in my hand and I talk to people about things, I can inspire people and I can get people to do things. That doesn't mean I have to get all of you to follow me and do something. That's an impossible task. You know, there's an old adage about a leader. A leader without any followers is just a guy or a girl out for a walk by themselves. And it's absolutely true. And I don't think you need to find followers. You need to find your passion. Do something that's uncomfortable. Volunteering to coach your son or daughter's soccer team is truly admirable. I do it. But I've got a vested interest. My kids are playing soccer. I also want to watch them. I want to take pictures. I want to wear the coach shirt with all of them at the end of the year and go, I was a coach of my daughter's seven-year-old soccer team. That's great. But you're not necessarily changing the world. That's very comfortable. Your wife comes to the games. Your friends are playing. Your daughter's friends are playing. Your son's friends are playing. 
Do something that's uncomfortable. Volunteering at your church? Comfortable. Volunteering at somebody else's church? Completely uncomfortable. Volunteering where nobody knows your name. Everyone's in a room like this and everyone's saying, who's the guy over there? What's that guy's name? Hey, what's that lady? Who is that? That's uncomfortable. Step forward. Step forward through your passion and find your purpose. Again, go back to those three questions. What am I good at? What do I like? And what does the world need? If you're an accountant, I'm pretty sure you can help out somewhere, but say you don't want to be an accountant. In your personal life, you're like, I deal with numbers all day. I can't do it anymore. Maybe H2O needs somebody to send some emails, stuff some envelopes. You're saying to yourself, okay, funny guy, Mr. TV guy, I'm not changing the world by stuffing envelopes. One of those envelopes that you stuff on behalf of H2O finds its way into somebody's hands that one day says, I am going to support H2O. You changed lives. You actually did it. It doesn't have to be about shoveling dirt. It doesn't have to be about trying to put together kitchen cabinets. It has to be something that takes your passion and moves it forward. It has to be something that is somewhat uncomfortable. Let's talk about your lives. Something bad happens to everybody, almost weekly, almost monthly, almost yearly. Seven years ago, I was playing soccer with Minnesota United. I was a professional soccer player when I was younger. I know, hard to believe, right? Look at my legs, look how skinny they are. But I was a professional soccer player and they were having a charity game and I could go out and play. And I was playing with Minnesota United and somebody elbowed me and broke my nose and my orbital bone and for the first time in my life I was knocked out unconscious. Completely unconscious. Wake up, play the rest of the game, think I'm having a great game, I drive home. The next morning my wife can't wake me up. She takes me to the doctor. Doctor says he's got a very bad concussion. Oh, and by the way, he's got a broken nose and a broken orbital bone. We gotta get him in the MRI machine. We have to make him feel better. I just re-signed my contract with Fox. Every three years we have new contracts. Just resigned my contract with Fox. And all I could think of is, I don't have a job anymore. There's no way. Because my doctor said, you're gonna be off work for at least 12 weeks. You're gonna be in a dark room. No TV, no phones, no computers, no nothing. He took me through concussion protocol. I don't know if any, any of you have done this with your children yet. With sports, it's become a big thing. Baseline, establish a baseline. What do you like right now before you receive a concussion? That way there's some way to compare other than the fact you're dizzy and you can't remember things. And they said, there's five words. That's all you need. This is how we're gonna start the concussion protocol. There's five words. Apple, saddle, bubble. I'm thinking to myself, this is easy. Apple, saddle, bubble. Okay, I'm locking in my head. Apple, saddle, bubble, soap, and horse. I thought, all right, here we go. My wife said, all right, honey, let's hear those words. She's sitting there holding my hand, bandaged up, sitting in a doctor's office. And I could see the words in my head, but I couldn't make them come out of my mouth. I could see them. I could physically see the words. And I said to my wife, I can see the words, but I can't make them come out of my mouth. And the doctor said, okay, it's worse than we thought. I went into the dark room. They tried different kinds of medications and I'll never forget it. About nine and a half weeks of being in bed, I got out of bed and managed to crawl down the stairs and see my family for dinner. I hadn't done it in over two months. And I said to my daughters, girls, I'm so sorry. I know this has been a long week, but I'll get better. I'm gonna go to work tomorrow. And my daughter looked at me and she said, Dad, it's been two months you've been in bed. And I was taken aback. And I said, well, what's been going on at the office? And my wife said, it's fine. The vice president, general manager of Fox 9 television came to the house and they said, don't worry about it, Ian's covered. We've got him for as long as he needs. That new contract you signed, you're gold. And my daughter looked at me and she said, dad, what are we gonna do about the polar plunge? She's six. What are we gonna do about the polar plunge? And I said, I, I don't think I can do it. And my wife said, no, I've already talked to them. We can't do it. Then my daughter said, she's six. She said, don't worry, dad, I got it. I was like, oh, that's great, you got it, that's great. So you, you want to do one or something? She goes, no, 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 Dad. I want to do what you do. I want to do all of them. And I said, you, you can't, you're six. She said, Dad, I got it. And my six-year-old, 
did every single plunge that winter. 14 weeks, every Saturday, every single polar plunge. That is a helping hand, Leonard. That is a legacy. That is passion and purpose passed down to my children. Got through the concussions. Keep working at Fox, whether you like it or not. I hope you do. <laughs> and then three years ago, you know, I'm a bit of a, uh, a there's, there's a word um, for those of you who are a little older. But there's a word for, for, for a man like me who's always tried to look his best. It's called metrosexual. It's a person who, who grooms a lot and wears special clothes and always wants to make sure I have the best tie. You know the term, right? And you look at me and you're like, yeah, he is. That's him. Absolutely. You know, my goal is to try and look better than my wife every day. Impossible, but I try. So I had this little kind of bump on my lip. I was in the bathroom and I do a little manscaping as I tend to do and I squeezed this bump and I, I had physical blackout pain. I said to my wife, I don't know what's going on. She said, well, we're going to have to go to the doctor or the dermatologist. She made a dermatologist appointment. And I remember sitting there on the, uh, in the dermatologist's office and there's, there's that, that table covered with the white paper. I don't get the white paper. I'm not sure what that does. If it does, does it catch the blood? I don't know. But I'm sitting on the white paper. And the dermatologist walks in, and we're about this far away, Blaine, from me and you. And she says, huh. And I looked at her and I said, yeah. I always try to make jokes at times like that. I said, oh, good, huh? Bad, huh? And she turned around and she walked out the door and I thought, that's a bad, huh? And she came back in about two minutes later with a couple of the biggest nurses I've ever seen and a tray of utensils and blades and everything else. And she said, what's going to happen here in the next couple of minutes is the worst pain you'll ever feel in your life. But I guarantee you it gets better from this. And I said, can you please tell me what's going on? And she said, you have a form of cancer that is starting to emerge from your lip and we don't know how big it is. And we have to do a biopsy on this right now. And I said, well, I'm dressed like this. I said, well, I'm going to the office. And she said, not today. So they did a biopsy and they called me later that day and they said, you have a form of cancer that's emerging from inside your lip called squamous cell. It's a fairly rare form of skin cancer in terms of the fact that people don't really hear about it much. We all know about basal cell and carcinomas. And I said, well, what does that mean? He said, well, we're going to have to operate. We have to take it out of your lip. We don't know how big it is. So you go to the lip operation that day. And you check in at the cancer clinic and there's a room full of people like this all waiting to go in for Mohs surgery. Mohs surgery is kind of like search and destroy. They go in, pull out some of the skin and they look at it under the microscope because every time they look they're trying to find clear margins that the cancer cells haven't spread. So I go in and there's about this many people and we come out and you come back into the waiting room after your first surgery and you're like, yeah, how'd it go for you? Yeah, not so great, how'd it go for you? And then you go back in. And you come back to the waiting room and there's less people and you think, oh, they've got it this time. I've been in there twice. And the nurse comes in and she goes, we've got to go. we got to go back again. And you go back and you come back out and there's less people in the waiting room. And you're like, oh, they've got it this time for sure. And the nurse comes in and she said, we, we didn't get it all. we got to go back in. And you're like, oh, my God, this is four times now. And as you come out, there's only a couple of people left in the surgery waiting room. And you think, this is it. They've got it this time. And my wife's holding my hand. And the nurse comes back in and she says, we, we got to go back in and do more surgery. We didn't get it all this time. And I go back in, that's five. And when I come out, there's no one left in the surgery waiting room. It's just me. I've been in the doctor's office now for seven hours. And I said to my wife, I can't do it again. I can't go back in the surgery. And the nurse came back in and I could tell by the way she was looking at me, she said, we got to go again. And I started crying. I said, I, I can't, I can't go back in there. And my wife said, is it okay if I come in? And they said, yeah. So my wife held my hand and she took me in. And now this is coming up on eight surgeries in one day. And I said to my wife, I said, what's it look like? And I, it didn't sound like that because I could barely talk. And she said, it doesn't, it doesn't look good. And so I'm flashing back to when I had my concussion. And I'm thinking, how am I going to work? How am I going to support my family? How am I going to take my passion and my purpose and change my corner of the world? These are the things that are going through my head instead of just thinking, oh my God, let's just get better. That was the last surgery of the day, eight more surgeries. They removed uh, three inches of my lower lip and part of my lower chin. And I asked my wife to take a picture of me. And sometimes when I talk to groups, I put it up. But groups have told me in the past, don't do that anymore. <laughs> Especially at lunch, it's not great. 
And all I can think of as I saw the picture is, how am I going to be on TV, but not for the reasons you think. How am I going to be on TV so that I can continue to change my corner of the world, that I can continue to make my corner of the world a little bit better, so that I can wake up every morning and say, what will I do for somebody else today? And before I go to bed, I say, what can I do for somebody else tomorrow? And my wife said, it's gonna be okay. And I went into plastic surgery the next day and I had four hours of plastic surgery and I don't know how they did it, but they actually made me better looking. I know, right? <laughs> and I have a lip. And I had to go to speech therapy. And through it all, again, Fox 9 television was there and they said, don't worry about a thing, you're golden. You're absolutely golden. You're continuing to make your, your vacation up every single day. Everything is going to be fine. And I finally got through it. And then I had to start my chemotherapy. Now, chemotherapy for skin cancer is different from chemotherapy for other forms of cancer. They basically take the stuff in the bag that goes in your veins for other forms of cancer and they mix it into a cream. And it's called fluorocyl and it physically burns the skin off your body. The kicker is you have to do it every day. You don't go to the doctor. You put this on twice a day with special gloves and it peels your skin off. And my daughters would come up and we called it the ouch ouch dance because every day I would put it on and they would be in there and they would try and make me laugh while I was pulling the skin off my own face. I've been back for three more surgeries since then, but I haven't had to do a full scale chemo and the reason I tell you that story is because it didn't stop anything. It won't stop anything because of that one question that I ask myself every single morning. What will I do for somebody else today? Before we started lunch, I walked around and introduced myself. And I think some people at the table were like, whoa, what, what the, what's he doing? And I said, I like to introduce myself so that you can tell everybody I'm fabulous. It's a little joke, but I want you to tell people a part of this story. And the part of the story I want you to tell people is he said to ask one really important question. What will I do for somebody else today? It starts with a very small and a very uncomfortable step. And the key part here is if it's uncomfortable, you know you are starting to make a difference, but it starts with that step. And if you need help making that first step, I'm a phone call, I'm an email away. I was, I was talking to one of the young ladies in the back and I was saying, man, it's getting so hard today in business. There are so many platforms. People send me a message and they'll say, did you get my message? I'll say, how did you send it? Well, I pushed it through on LinkedIn and it went through WhatsApp and ended up on Facebook. I'm like, ah, all these ways to get a hold of me, and there are a lot, if you put in the subject line of an email and you put your name and the word calling and White Bear Lake, Bob Schlitke calling White Bear Lake, you're gonna get an email back from me. It may not be immediate, it may be two days, it may be a week, but you'll get an email back from me because that means you're reaching out to me, you're ready to make that uncomfortable step and you're gonna try and change your little corner of the world. What am I good at? What do I like? And what does the world need? Go and change your little corner of the world, folks. I guarantee you it will make you feel so good and so refreshed that the legacy you leave behind nobody will ever see, but you'll know. It's the greatest feeling ever. If my wife was here, I'd tell her that marrying her was the greatest feeling ever, but she's not. <laughs> it's the greatest thing you can do. And that's my message to you today. What will you do for somebody else today? Your name calling White Bear Lake in the subject line of an email. My email is real easy. Ian dot Leonard at foxtv.com and my challenge to you is to take that first uncomfortable step. Thanks for listening to my time today. I really appreciate it.